All right, peoples, it's Ross, and today we're planting out snap peas. We started them indoors this year. I want to talk about why I'm growing snap peas, how to plant them out, and how to start them. Uh, just some of the options you can you can certainly go with when starting snap peas indoors or even planting them outside. Um, I personally think that snap peas are probably the best thing to grow in the spring, um, especially in the early spring because there's only so much you can grow early on in the season and you should make use of that time. A lot of you guys, for whatever reason, think your season starts after your, your last frost, but that's not true. Um, you got a month to a month and a half before your last frost that you can really start gardening and get going and grow some food. Um, so a lot of these cool loving crops that I'm about to show you guys in the next coming videos, because we're going to do a whole series on this. You know, this whole thing, by the way, is on the 250 days of gardening playlist that I've created. Um, but we're going to go into more detail on different cool loving crops and why you should grow them. Snap peas, like I said, is the number one. Without a doubt, it is the number one. And there's different types of peas, okay? So which pea am I talking about? A lot of you guys have had peas at home and don't like peas. And I don't blame you because they're bad. They're horrible. Um, why eat those peas? I've, I've never grew up liking peas. But these are snap peas, okay? There's a difference. You can... The pod that surrounds the pea is edible and very good, right? Sort of like a, like a snow pea. But the difference between a snow pea and a snap pea, a sugar snap pea, um, I guess there's many names for these different things, but the biggest difference is that the pea inside the pod is edible as well and gets larger. So you've got yourself a situation where the pod is edible, the pea itself is very edible and very good, very sweet. The whole thing's super sweet. You've also got um, different peas that you can grow, and I'm not really sure what the technical name for those are, but you don't eat the pod. You grow the, the, the peas for the peas themselves and you throw away the pod, which to me doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because I love the pod and these snap peas are so sweet that anything I do in the early spring these guys are there and I can just snack on them all day. I plant so many of them. In fact, last year I think I put probably in there, I wonder how many seeds this little packet here is. It's a half a pound of snap peas and I bet you there's probably roughly, I probably planted um, maybe 300 snap pea plants last year. Um, I love them that much, and I really think a lot of you guys should try try and grow them. Seriously, it's such an easy thing to grow. The spring is the perfect time to be doing this. Um, and what I want to show you guys now is kind of like the easy germination of all these guys. It's very simple, so I don't even have to start them indoors if I if I didn't want to. But because I have these trays, and I figured out a real nice system for these trays. It's really easy to make this work. These are 128 cell trays, and each of these little cells is like an inch by an inch, and I think it's about two and a half inches deep, um, which is plenty for these little snap pea plants, right? We're about a month away from when I'm gonna plant these in the ground, uh, transplant these out. And what we're gonna do with them, because they, they don't mind the cold, they can handle a frost, in fact, they like the cold. They like to grow in the cold. It's better to get them out early uh, rather than late. So we're going to transplant these out in about a month from now, um, which actually may be a bit more time than most of you guys would probably like, right? Um, these snap peas, they germinate so easily that, um, and they grow so quickly that I'm probably not going to have a real problem even direct seeding them in the ground. But to get an extra couple weeks out of this would be really great. And what my plan is, and we're gonna go into this more detail, I think, in other videos that we're gonna do in the next couple weeks. But all the cool loving crops that I'm about to seed today, um, about February 15th, a month before my planting date, I'm gonna put these guys in the sunroom. 
So I'm gonna get them to germinate. We're gonna get them in this nice little closet here, this nice little environment here that I'm rooting all of my fig cuttings in. We've talked at great length about this. We're gonna put them up here, get them to germinate, maybe get them even to grow a little bit, and then we're gonna move them out into the sunroom, which is kind of like a greenhouse that I have. And the sunroom uh, stays above 32 degrees. It has access to sunlight for most of the day, although it is not the best sunlight because well, there's windows, so the windows kind of uh, get rid of a lot of that sunlight. But it's gonna be really nice for hardening off these plants, even the fig cuttings, right? So what I'll do is I'll let them germinate here, and then once they germinate and grow just, just a tiny bit, I'm gonna move them out into the sunroom where it's actually cold, somewhere between 32 and 70 degrees, rather than in here, it's 79 degrees, which is way too warm for cool-loving crops, right? My onions are growing and my tomatoes are growing and they're loving this warm environment, but all the cool loving crops are not. So that's the plan, right? So I figure about a month is gonna be enough time for these guys to be in the sunroom or really not in the sunroom for a month, maybe about, it'll take maybe about a week to nine days for these things to germinate here. And then we can move them out into the sunroom. So they're probably gonna be in the sunroom for about three weeks. And then what I'll do is March 15th, I'm gonna transplant these guys out of this little tray here, stick them in nice compost, and we're gonna put a nice little row cover over top of those to help these guys get the earliest start I know of to the season. So that's the plan with these. And I, I, I said before, I love them so much, but let's talk about now how I'm doing this. So I got myself a pencil here. I made some holes, right, into each individual cell. Before we even put the soil in here, we made sure it was the appropriate moisture level. We packed in the soil really hard into these, into these cells. We made the hole here with the pencil. And in each hole is going in two different pea seeds. Let's get two more for you guys. So we got two pea seeds. Again, they're so easy to germinate that I'm actually gonna have close to 100% with this. I think this one dropped here, I'm not sure, yeah. So, I'm actually gonna have somewhere around 100% with this. And what that means is we're gonna have, um, I'm, I'm serious, snap peas are like the easiest thing to germinate that I've ever grown. I, I don't know what it is, they, they germinate so well and so easily that in each of these cells will be two plants, but I want it that way. Um, I actually think I prefer it that way. And I've seen market gardeners um, like Charles Dowding up in England. He's a really well-known market gardener there. This is how he does it with his snap peas. Um, and they grow really well together like that. You know, they kind of help support themselves and grow up tall. And they don't really need a whole lot of space. I think, uh, you know, this is a variety here called Sugar Ann, which the snap peas, most of the snap peas, I think, the sugar snap peas, are pretty much low growing. So they're not gonna get really big, right? They're not gonna get, they're not gonna need trellises, they're not gonna grow up six feet tall. You know, these are real simple snap peas that kind of grow together and will support each other anywhere you put them. So you just, pretty much transplant these in the ground. And because there's so many of them and they're so dense, you don't really have to care for them. Um, you don't even have to water them. Our spring is so wet. Uh, we've had so much water this whole winter that um, I won't probably have to water a thing until maybe July. And by July, these things are, are done, right? It's too warm. The temperatures pretty much crush these guys. Any pods that are left on the plants will probably start to dry up and I can use those for uh, seed for next year. So that's pretty much the video on snap peas, guys. It's really, really simple. And I wish a lot of you guys would grow more of these because I really do believe they're probably the tastiest thing you can grow in the, in the, in the early spring. Like, I'm not gonna get anything probably before these that I can just eat raw, pick it off the plant and just pop it in my mouth no preparation needed at all. It's really, really cool. Um, 
I mean, I guess you could do radishes, which are probably even earlier, or maybe even some, uh, you know, turnips or carrots, but uh, these are the sugar and variety, which is one of the earliest varieties of sugar snap peas in existence. I think they're like 47 days or something like that. It doesn't even say here for some reason, but it's, it's I mean, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. You should just grow them, for God's sakes, please. <laughs> I think you guys won't regret it. All right, everyone. So thank you all for watching this one. Um, please subscribe. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like snap peas. Uh, also, please follow along with this playlist that I'm creating, the 250 Days of Gardening playlist. It's really going to help me uh, support my channel, and this is going to be such an awesome journey that I'm going to take you guys on. So, um, yeah, talk to you all soon. See you for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys.